How to restore a tube radio? Step 5. Good day and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration for Step 5 in our series of How to Restore a Tube Radio. And as per usual, before we get going, um, my usual safety warning that there are dangerous all the way up to lethal voltages present in the back of these sets. So if you follow along at home, uh, you do so at your own risk. Please take the necessary steps to protect your safety. Very important. Okay, so we're going to move ahead with this uh, Helicrafters S40B. Uh, we're into step five, which means that Pretty much most of our uh, electronic restoration is done, and it's now time to start um, thinking about cleaning and reassembly and uh, all the other notes that we made along the way. So this can be a little bit radio specific. <clears throat> we noted some problems mechanically with this radio. In step one, we noticed that the uh, one of the dial shafts was bent. I've taken the tower off it so that I can deal with that, and we'll get to that in this step. Uh, we also noticed that the capacitors bushings were, the tuning capacitor bushings were bad, so we'll get to that. And uh, I've also got a really short speaker wire. I've got a big, long black one here, if I can get it out from under the chassis, and a little tiny white one. So the white one's in bad shape, so I'm going to replace it. So we're going to do things like that. You know, we're going to lift up this capacitor, we're going to clean underneath it, we're going to uh, change the bushing, the rubber bushing in the back of this capacitor, and we're going to hard mount it to the chassis. Um, this is going to involve just temporarily putting the face panel back on. Because this capacitor can move side to side, we want to make sure that we get the dial in the center of the dial window, because the dial window's got the red indicator on it. And when we wa lock it down, we want the dial to be smack in the center of that. And by locking it down without the rubber, as I've described before, this rubber that uh, Helicrafter originally put in, heats up, distorts, degrades, the capacitor begins to get pulled over towards the tuning tower because the, the tuning dial cords are, are pulling on it and it takes the whole dial over away from one side of the tuning window and then your dial calibration goes off. So we want to lock this down permanently so it doesn't move. So when we do a good alignment on this unit, it stays and our dial calibration is accurate. So these are the types of things we want to do um, as long, you know, once we we get all these issues done, we get our tuning tower back on, we get our dial cords on, we get our speaker wires dealt with, top of the deck clean. I think at that point we'll be ready to put some tubes in it and see what happens. So let's take a look at the top of the chassis and see what we're going to do first. Okay, we're looking at the top of the chassis here. Let's just view review some of the stuff I just discussed. You can see the short speaker lead. I think I'll do it first, just to get it out of the way. Um, I've done two things off camera, but I've sh oh, I shouldn't say off camera. I did separate films on these uh, items because they're rather important. I did a clean on the uh, variable capacitor, and it came out very nice. And I shot a separate movie on that. And uh, these. IF transformers were stuck. They're now free. I've done a separate movie on that um, that I'll be launching a little later, maybe in a week or so. So uh, those will be things that you probably want to see. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a speaker wire first, get it out of my hair. Then we're going to attack this tuning cap. We're going to take it off and replace the bearings, clean underneath it. And I'm going to give you a demonstration of how this uh, petroleum jelly thing works. And uh, you can see I've got a lot of it tra chassis cleaned up and some of it's not. So that's one of the things we'll get done. So in this section of this video, we'll get the cap done. Um, yeah, we've got to get the front plate put on and get the dial centered, get the speaker wire changed, get it cleaned up. Let's see if we can get all that done. And then we'll move on to the next thing. I don't know how well you can see this. These are the remnants of the bushings from the tuning cap. These gray ones here, you can see they're all, I hope you can see they're all split and cracked and broken. This black one here, 
was the, the back bushing that have all been replaced. And I'm just going to turn this around so we can have a look at that. So just one second. So we're looking at the back of the cap here now. And my screwdriver is pointing to where I put a new black bushing in here now. It's a grommet. It comes from a kit off of Amazon. I'll show you the kit in a minute. But uh, it's been a wealth of goodness. It has all the right size um, grommets for doing the S38. It has that right proper size grommet for doing that, although you do have to pump, pump, poke a hole in the center of it. It has a skin on it. And I should also uh, point out, I don't know if you can see that. You really can't. Okay, so I replaced the, uh, the white speaker wire we spoke about. Um, and a word on that is, please ensure you're using the right wire, the right voltage. And the wire that I buy has a silicone jacket, so it's very, very heat tolerant. So the proper voltage, even though there's not 600 volts flowing to the speaker, it just kind of sort of stays in key with the radio. Silicone jacket, so if something gets warm, it's not going to get burnt. So that's done. The uh, spacers on the, uh, on the front part of the cap are done. Um, I just have to, again, put the temporarily put the faceplate on and make sure the dial's in the center of the window. But while we're here, let's have a little demonstration of... Uh, using petroleum jelly to clean the chassis. And all I got here is an old toothbrush. I'm just going to do a little area here. This chassis is not very dirty. This stuff is kind of sort of dusty, baked on over the years. It won't, won't wipe off by itself. But as you can see already, I've just given an area a little bit of a scrub here with some petroleum jelly and a toothbrush. Once you're done that, wipe it off. So that's kind of level one chassis cleaning. It works well. And yes, it leaves a little bit of an oily film, but it's kind of protective in a way. I don't mind it at all. Better than using caustic chemicals. So I guess I'll begin working on... Actually, no, I'm going to finish the chassis clean. Then I'm going to put the faceplate on for the uh, dial centering. So uh, I'll be back in a few minutes when I get a little bit of this done. Okay. I put the face panel back on just temporarily. And I put the, uh, the dial on. You can just see the red line and the dial is nice and centered now. So I've slid the front of that capacitor around until I got that centered in the window of the uh, bezel here. That looks pretty good. Oops. I just put my uh, bench light behind it. There you see my thumb in behind there. It looks pretty good. It's nice and clean. Got the original one, two, three, four on it. So it's the original piece. So that part is done. I can take the panel off now and carry on. Okay, I've got my uh, tuning tower back on and all uh, rebuilt, cleaned up and reassembled, as if you remember from the, uh, the first step, we noticed that this shaft was bent. I was able to put it into my micro lathe and uh, bump straighten it, if you will. It runs nice and straight now. It, uh, it was bent, but not horribly bad. So they're both cleaned up and oiled and greased, put back in. Same with the upper pulley here, it's all oiled and greased. So I'm very sad to announce that the next step is uh, another one that's not my favorite, which is putting dial cords on. Now I'm not going to film putting dial cords on because this has to be a family rated show. And if I film myself putting dial cords on, rest assured the air is going to be blue. It's not my most favorite job. I'm not a, I'm not a knitter. I'm not a crocheter. I'm not a needlepoint person. Uh, uh, it's just not, uh, you know, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and uh, dial cords is not my forte. In fact, there have been a few times where I've had my wife come and do it for me because I just, uh, just uh, not my thing. But anyway, so I'm going to do dial cords next, um, and uh, then I'll be back. 
Well, okay, the dial cords are on. I survived. This one wasn't too horrible, but nevertheless, it was uh, not my cup of tea. They uh, turn nice and smooth. Springs are quite extended to allow for a little bit of stretch in the in the uh, in the cords. If the cords stretch a little bit, the springs will take it up over the course of time. So I guess those dial cords are ready for another. 20 years of service. Actually, the original ones came off of this. They were both broken, so who knows when that happened. I suspect this radio was used right up until the point the dial cords broke. I don't know if you can see, but if you look at the transmit receiver, standby receive switch, they wore the plating right off it, right down to the brass. So somebody was using this maybe in CW or maybe an AM operation uh, on a regular basis back in the day. I've also installed two new 44 dial lights. Now, um, 44s are a little bit brighter than 47s. Um, so you want to be careful with them. I have seen 44s bright and hot enough that it'll actually turn the band spread dial brown on the back. So when you install a new 44 and you run it for a while, check the heat. If you, it's not a very big area that's covering, and if you had to, you could drop down to a 47, which is a lower wattage bulb and uh, not as much heat. Um, I've got LEDs, but I don't think they're very good. I'm going to play with them a little bit. I got my first package to play with, and uh, I don't think they're absolutely wonderful. We can start getting ready here. I'm not going to place these too accurate right now because I'm just going to start getting the radio ready to put tubes in it and whatnot. There we go. And it wants you to be all the way closed. we'll do our dial calibration much more accurately when we get there and there we go that looks pretty cool so I'm just going to point something out now is when I uh, do alignment on these radios the manufacturer will specify this be set at zero and you calibrate your dial to whatever frequency you're working with or when you're in the alignment procedure but i don't do that i don't calibrate this at zero i calibrate it at 50. and the reason for that is is if i say tune to 10 megahertz wwv the time signal and this is kind of a coarse tune, and you never get it right bang on, so you always wind up going to fine-tune. And if this is up right at zero already, I can only fine-tune one way. I can only go up the band. I can't go down the band. So if I put it at 50, I can tune up a little bit, or I can tune down a little bit. So I find that much more convenient as an operator to put that at 50 during frequency calibration of the dial. It just works out much, much better for me. So... Uh, I think this is going to be a short one for now and uh, I'm going to button this one up and we'll come back and we'll do a uh, final fire up and uh, alignment in the next video but so far so good everything's gone well it looks much cleaner and prettier and uh, I'm sure you can start placing your bets now when I plug two tubes in to see if it runs but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be just fine so we'll button this up for now and uh, we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.